Image macros, doge memes, deep fried memes, loss, copy pastas, even the rage comics of old. These are some of the things that come to mind when people hear the word meme. But what you probably don't think of are words like espionage, propaganda, and psychological warfare. No, no, we're not here to tell you that all memes are actually tools of malicious governments and secretive political groups, but that doesn't mean that none of them are. We're talking about weapons-grade memes here, and how sinister groups can use seemingly innocent internet jokes to achieve their own less-than-innocent goals. An internet meme in the most basic sense is some kind of media that's repeated, modified, and spread across the internet. It's not unlike a virus in some ways, it's highly infectious, resistant to traditional methods of information suppression due to its decentralized nature, and most dangerously of all, they're prone to mutations. The actual meaning of a meme can alter and become more pernicious over time as it spreads through different users and forms new iterations with each repetition. The transformation of the Pepe the Frog from innocuous reaction image to racist mascot is a good example. When you put it like this, it suddenly becomes extremely clear why the simple meme can be an incredibly attractive weapon of psychological warfare. You might ask, isn't this all an overblown threat? After all, how could a meme ever really pose a threat to something as powerful as a national government? Perhaps it's best to ask Russian President Vladimir Putin and Chinese President Xi Jinping. Both of these powerful world leaders earned some mockery on the world stage for banning certain memes. For Putin, it was memes depicting him as a so-called gay clown. And for Xi, it was a popular Chinese meme trend of comparing him to cartoon character Winnie the Pooh. Of course, at face value, this seems like a silly exercise in ego, but why go through all this trouble if you didn't believe that memes could be a credible threat? A meme, if weaponized correctly, can undermine a government, shift the tenor of an election, help in the formation of fringe political groups, and more. Mimetic warfare is seen by NATO's STRATCOM COE Defensive Strategic Communications Journal as a form of information operations, a branch of warfare largely concerned with the collection of enemy information and the dissemination of misinformation in a manner that can control the overall narrative of a conflict or sow confusion. Experts credit memes to having an outsized influence on the election of President Donald Trump in 2016 and the rise of powerful right-wing movements across the Western world. Memes have been compared by some experts to forms of guerrilla warfare and the improvised explosive devices typically used by terror groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda operating in the Middle East. This is because, like those tactics, mimetic warfare often favors the little guy in an asymmetric combat scenario, meaning a combat wherein one combatant is significantly larger or more conventionally powerful than the other. How? Well, like everything with internet memes, it all comes down to public perception. The cornerstones of internet comedy are parody, satire, surrealism, and often straight-up mockery. It's an inherently anti-establishment form of information dissemination. For a meme to really catch on and thus work as an effective weapon, it needs to appear organic. Memes that seem forced, such as memes used by large corporate entities for advertising purposes, like some toe-curlingly cringe-worthy old Wendy's commercials, or by authority figures like the NYPD's MyNYPD hashtag, will almost assuredly fall flat. That's why memes are perfect weapons for the underdog or the outsider, for better or worse. This counterculture anti-establishment sentiment can propel a rebellious meme into internet stardom. Though it's worth noting that a larger entity can still be a formidable force of mimetic warfare, it's just fighting a more uphill battle, unless they get their teenage nephew to do it for them. Unlike many forms of creativity, a key element of memes is anonymity and a lack of clear authorship. Like the Guy Fox mask from the Alan Moore comic V for Vendetta, which is in and of itself a meme, thanks to hacktivist group Anonymous, it allows for its creator or creators to be both everyone and no one. As we mentioned earlier, a meme is inherently decentralized rather than monopolized, like most other creative mediums. Much like radicalized members of political insurgency groups in the real world, you never know where the memes are coming from, and that's one of their greatest strengths. It makes them far, far harder to intercept than traditional propaganda campaigns. Before we proceed into the present and future of meme warfare, we need to take a trip into meme history. The term was first coined by popular evolutionary biologist and author Richard Dawkins of the God Delusion fame. He first coined the term in his 1976 book The Selfish Gene, deriving it from the ancient Greek word mimem, which roughly translates into something imitated, and the English word gene, 
According to Dawkins, memes are to culture what genetics are to living things. As natural selection culls but all the most evolved genes, culture is composed of the most evolved memes. Memes are essentially perfectly distilled units of culture. To bring this back to our more militarized context, he who controls the strongest memes controls culture itself. While Dawkins probably wasn't envisioning lolcats and Baby Yoda when he first came up with the theory, the logic undeniably tracks. The other prophet of the meme wars to come was actually a science fiction role-playing game from 2002 called Transhuman Space. Set in the far-off world of 2100, the game predicts a grim future wherein mimetic warfare agents are a common fixture of modern combat. This trend happened to come about 85 years earlier than the game expected. As some of the second wave of internet memes came into prominence in the early to mid-2000s, academic research into the concept of mimetic warfare began to intensify. With the internet catching on like wildfire, a future full of weaponized memes felt less like a far-out science fiction fantasy and more like a looming reality. In 2005, Michael Prosser, a member of the U.S. Marine Corps, published a paper entitled Memetics, a growth industry in U.S. military operations, and even proposed the founding of a meme warfare center. A year later, Dr. Robert Finkelstein, the founder of Robotic Technology Incorporated, was paid to conduct a four-year study into military memetics by the U.S. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, better known as DARPA. One of the first popular examples of a politically powerful meme in the U.S. culture occurred during the 2008 presidential election between Barack Obama and the late John McCain. During an interview about foreign policy, McCain had made a bizarre guffaw of singing Bomb Iran to the tune of the Beach Boys' Barbara Ann. This was seized by grassroots meme makers at the time and used to make a fool of McCain while elevating the prestige of Obama as a more mature and charismatic statesman. It was on this public perception that Obama won that election, and the one following it against Republican Mitt Romney. However, such basic memetic warfare feels like child's play compared to the methods practiced, refined, and utilized during the 2016 election between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. This contentious election arguably put memetic warfare on the map with some commentators saying that President Trump was memed into the White House. This raises an interesting question. While most internet memes appear organic and spontaneous, how can a person or group intentionally create and coordinate the spread of memes to achieve their political goals? Is it even possible to do such a thing on purpose in the endlessly chaotic world of the internet? The simple answer is yes, but it'll take a lot of hard work. The complicated answer is that doing so takes a huge group of like-minded individuals working domestically and internationally to pull it off. There's considerable evidence that the Russian government, who saw Donald Trump as a more favorable candidate for their global interests, put their finger on the American electoral scales through the use of political memes. These were created and disseminated by bot farms, meaning organizations that run huge numbers of fake accounts on various social media platforms, like the so-called Internet Research Agency. To the untrained eye, the legitimate accounts were indistinguishable from the bots. The result? A general sense of division and mistrust was spread among the online population. The effects of this campaign on the psyche of the internet have been massive, compared by some to a modern red scare. These days, accusing others of secretly being a Russian bot is a common piece of online political rhetoric. And thanks to the use of memetic warfare, this effect was achieved with relative ease compared to a more traditional propaganda or psychological warfare operation. But, as we said earlier, the international meme warfare was only a portion of the overall pro-Trump meme offensive. While the Russian bots undeniably helped redirect the conversation, the real memetic warfare innovation was born on 4chan slash poll board and the subreddit r slash the Donald. These were two domestic hubs of meme creation that acted as research and development laboratories. They would discuss, develop, and experiment with various memes and slogans, which they would then disseminate across the internet. Through their tactical employment of the right memes, they could astroturf Trump support across the web, meaning they could inflate the public perception of grassroots support for their positions. They also took advantage of how memes interact with the online and traditional media ecosystems in order to spread their messages further. For example, one meme campaign conducted by these groups was known as the hashtag draft my daughter or hashtag draft my wife campaign. Reddit and 4chan users would take internet users' private photos and manipulate them to look like official advertising from the Clinton campaign, insinuating that Hillary Clinton planned to draft women into the military. While this is an exaggeration, it wasn't technically entirely wrong, as Clinton had spoken on behalf of a bill that did contain a similar provision earlier that year. And this is where the dark genius of this particular meme offensive began to set in. 
The dissemination of anti-Clinton material in the guise of pro-Clinton images is itself newsworthy. Outlets would cover this phenomenon and thus spread the memes further. Even if articles were made to explicitly condemn such a practice, they would be forced into admitting the element of truth at the core of the meme, literally forcing their opponents to disseminate their talking points. This phenomenon, in turn, would then be covered by larger outlets and so the cycle continues, benefiting the meme makers throughout. This variety of guerrilla amplification is known as trading up the chain, a term coined by author, marketing guru, and former self-proclaimed media manipulator Ryan Holiday. Post-2016, the profile of mimetic warfare continued to grow across the globe. Mimetic warfare was part of the India-Pakistan conflict, the Israel-Palestine conflict, and a method of raising the online cloud of various alt-right figures in the US and Europe. One such figure is former Peter Thiel employee Jeff Giese, a well-known alt-right organizer with ties to the Trump administration. He was one of the authors of a 2015 NATO paper entitled, It's Time to Embrace Mimetic Warfare. Time has only gone on to vindicate Giese's perspective here, as mimetic warfare is on trajectory to become as common a part of war as the 15-round sidearm and the hand grenade. Much like the nuclear arms race of the 20th century, the speed of mimetic warfare's advancement shows no sign of stopping. Social media has already become a new battleground in domestic and international information operations, and as more countries and insurgency groups get wise to this, it's only going to get worse. New memes are being born, rising up and fading into obscurity every hour of every day, so there's no way of telling who's behind all of them. So next time you're browsing Reddit or Twitter or even Facebook, checking out all the latest memes, it's perhaps worth asking yourself what exactly you're looking at. A goofy internet joke or the world's newest and most effective weapon of information warfare? Now go watch What is Guerrilla Warfare and Most Dangerous Biological Weapons right now for more information on the cutting edge of modern conflict from the Infographic Show. In the meantime, happy memeing!